so good to have each and every one of you who have joined here to worship Jesus together. Thank you, Brother Sotringham, for leading so well. Today, I want to share about freedom. And needless to say, there's so much more we can go study and go deeper about this subject. But whatever little that I have received, I want to share it with you today. And I believe that we are going to be blessed this evening. Well, God is really serious. I want to let you know that God is serious about our freedom. Okay. And he has given us complete freedom because unlike people in the church, he is not scared of sins. He is not worried about what people would do with this freedom. He is not afraid of mistakes. Right? So he gives us freedom. But here's the thing. Biblical freedom doesn't mean that you can do whatever you want. Okay? Rather, this freedom empowers us to live the best life that we can live. To do what we were called to do. You might be wondering what were we called to do. The answer to that we might find in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. I'm going to read out from the NKJV. It says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So we were created to do good works. We were created for good works. But the catch is, the good works in this verse doesn't mean nice works. Doesn't mean the kind of work that is pleasing to look at. The kind of good works that we are talking about is not necessarily nice works. Okay, Because you see, not all the good works are God's work. Not necessarily, right? So God's work sometimes appears harsh. Now the Greek word here for good work, the good works here in the verse, the Greek word is agathos. And this agathos, according to Strong's Concordance, it is inherent means inherently good, intrinsically as to the believer. Describes what originates from God and is empowered by Him in your life through faith. So the good works mentioned here is agathos and it means this good this goodness it originates from god and is empowered by him in our lives through faith okay so this good works paul is talking about is not just us giving change to the beggars and etc this good works that originated from god and is empowered by him in our life True faith is the kind of good works that invades our situations and circumstances by His presence, by His goodness. Some of the examples of this kind of good work is healing, casting out demons, raising the dead, etc. Aren't all this um, what happens when we let God into our situation and circumstances? Right? He changes things. The impossible becomes possible. That means that. But when God comes into the picture, resurrection life flows, right? Sickness, they run away when God invades our situation. So this is the kind of good works that agathos means, right? Agathos, what it means? It originates from God and is empowered by Him in our life through faith. And Ephesians 2.10 says we were called to do this kind of good works. But how can we do this kind of good works? And we can do these good works that God has prepared for us if we know and walk in His freedom. Because biblical freedom means we are free and also qualified to do good works, the God kind of good works. And with this freedom, when we walk in it, we will realize that all things are possible with Him. Let's turn to John chapter 8, verse 34. I'll read from NLT. It says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. So this is Jesus speaking. And this was before the cross in the Old Covenant. Jesus is saying, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Now after the cross in Romans chapter 6, verse 22. I'll read from NIV. It says, but now... Now means after the cross. But now that you have been set free from sin, the cross, if you believe, I'm talking about believers, okay? If once you believe in Jesus, 
on the cross, you are set free from sin. And you know what the, be the best part is? It says, now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God. So now you are, we are no longer slaves of sin. We are slaves of God. The benefit, it continues, the benefit means the benefit of this freedom. The benefit you reap leads to holiness and the result is eternal life. The popular belief that freedom means doing whatever we want is wrong. Christians today think that if we preach the freedom that God actually died to give us, people might sin more. But the verse is clear. The benefit of this freedom is holiness. I think this thought that when we preach this freedom, people will sin more comes from the misunderstanding of this freedom. I want to let you know, church, that it is because we are not preaching this freedom enough that people are in bondage to sin. Preach to the people the freedom that Christ died to give. Tell them that they have been set free, right, because of the cross, if they believe. Therein lies the power to set people free from bondage of sin and to empower them to live like who God has planned for them. If you look at a believer today who is struggling with addiction and say to yourself, I can't tell him God has set him free from uh, condemnation because he might free fall into his addiction more. Uh, please don't mind the horns. I'll say it again. If you see a believer today who is struggling with addiction and you think to yourself that I cannot tell him that he is free, that now that there's no condemnation, if we tell them that he might free fall into sin, then that's wrong. I say this because we need to be confident enough in the power of the gospel. The power of the gospel to do what God says it can do. Unadulterated gospel is the need of the hour. Unfortunately, the church gives the law to those who fail, who make mistakes, who commit sins. They play scare tactics. They say, if you don't get your acts right, you are going to hell. Yeah, they are talking to believers, okay? They say, if you don't stop doing what you are doing, you may lose your salvation. Your name will be cut off from the church. But all this leads to the opposite of what we really want to see. If you turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56, it says, The strength of sin is the law. So when we do all this legality, right? All this legality only leads to more sinning because it empowers sin. So do's and don'ts only lead to more bondage then what sets us free is the grace of God, right? Freedom is so powerful, church. We have to get this, okay? Freedom is so powerful and so precious that only God can give it to you. No one else can. Nothing else can. Only the grace of God sets us free. Only the grace of God. And Jesus is the grace of God personified, right? Let's continue. That is why the same grace that sets us free also teaches us to say no to everything that is ungodly. Notice that the Bible doesn't say the law teaches us to be godly or to say no to ungodliness. Titus chapter 2 verse 11 and 12. I'll read from NIV. It says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all men. To all people, it teaches us to say not to it, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. So Jesus, the grace of God personified, came and taught us to say no to ungodliness. I said Jesus is the grace of God personified because in John chapter 1 verse 17 it says so. So the biblical freedom is the freedom in the Holy Spirit, right? Like I said, it is so powerful that only God can give it to you. And the biblical freedom is the freedom in the Holy Spirit. And the fact is, we cannot enjoy this freedom without His help. 
the moment that you can you, you think you can do whatever you want with this freedom is when you set yourself bondage to to sin again it is not about doing whatever we want to but about his will you are free to do what is good and pleasing to god you are free from the power of the clutches of sin and if there's anyone here who is uh, uh, you know going through resentment who is going through uh, sickness i want to let you know that you are free okay because he is the redeemer he is the healer you are free from the curse and the condemnation of the law galatians 3 you are free from false religion okay you are free from trying to become like your behavioral fully righteous you are free from that false religion let us get this today church it is for freedom that christ set us free stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery just close your eyes and say i am free that's what galatians 5 verse 1 says in niv it was for freedom that christ set us free don't let yourself be burdened by the yoke of slavery of resentment whatever yoke of slavery you are under get it off yourself right now because god has set you free okay take this freedom ask holy spirit to help you enjoy this freedom because it was with high price that god bought this freedom for you okay enjoy this freedom and if you turn to second corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 i will i'll read where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom where is the spirit of the lord he is in you he lives inside of you where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom it was bought at high price church we can't afford to let resentment or unforgiveness or hopelessness or addiction or sickness or any type of sins to keep us under bondage again okay where the spirit of the lord is there's freedom that is how we stay free knowing that where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom take it for yourself today romans 8 14 it says for those who are led by the spirit of god are the children of god so how do we walk how do we stay free be led by the spirit who is in you the author of this god kind of freedom listen to him be led and walk in his freedom like mentioned earlier we can only enjoy this freedom by the holy spirit's help be led by the spirit of god and stay free and live like the true children of god that you are church sin is powerless because of what jesus did on the cross he has rendered it powerless okay you are free to be sinless you are free to say no to sin if any of us are struggling with any sin or difficult time this is my proposal could it be because we are focusing on the wrong things we can't take care of sin or difficult time with fear because fear has to do with the law but we can overcome anything by grace by love because grace has to do with god overcome does not necessarily means free from situations overcome means we might be in a situation of hardship but we overcome it by his peace by his freedom right the truth is you are free from sickness even if you are sick right now bodily know that you are free from sickness okay you are already healed by the stripes of jesus receive that freedom and overcome sickness remember god has set you free is your truth regardless of what we go through because we are more than conquerors and we are none of this world because we have been set free church i pray that you enjoy god's freedom today can i pray for you and close for today father i declare your freedom over everyone who has tuned in 
to listen to my sharing today. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead each and every one of us into your glorious freedom, to walk in it, freedom from anything and everything that is not from you. Help us to realize, Lord, that we are free. We are free in you. And this freedom that empowers us to walk in your truth, I pray that will become the reality, everyday reality of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, church. Stay free, stay blessed. Thank you, Brother Zenkam, for that beautiful sermon. And we are going to continue with our communion and with the Lord's Supper and with the benediction. And may I request Brother Zenkam to do both. Let's welcome him again. All right, let's have the communion together. If you have the elements ready, uh, I just want to share that it is a perfect opportunity for us to claim our freedom yet again. The cross is a perfect reminder. This communion is a perfect reminder of the cross. Are you ready? If you are struggling from sickness or addiction, take this and claim your freedom that Christ died to give you. Okay? Let's pray before we take it. And I'll pray for you and we'll take it together. Let's pray. Father, thank you for sending your son to us so that we can be free just like you for empowering us to live the life that you have set us, set for us. Thank you that because of your broken body, Lord Jesus, we are made whole. We are healed. Thank you for your shed blood, which was for the remission of our sins. Today we are holy. Today we are blameless. Today we are qualified to be free. We are qualified to do your good works. We are qualified to, co- to be called your children because of your sacrifice and we receive all this right now in jesus name we take this communion in remembrance of your finished work in remembrance of you with thanksgiving in our hearts in jesus name amen let's have it together i pray thank you lord Thank you so much for your amazing, amazing grace. We bless your holy name today. Thank you for always loving us. Thank you for always looking out for us. Thank you for this freedom that you have given us. Help us to walk in it by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. And now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stay blessed, church. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being with us here in the service. I hope you are blessed immensely through this worship, through the sermon, through the givings, and through the songs, and through everything. And I would like to uh, bring due to your notice that in case if you have missed out any of the sermon please feel free to visit our youtube channel and you can type in your favorite sermon and you can listen to that again while doing that kindly press the subscribe button and you can follow us also in instagram and in facebook till then stay blessed stay warm don't get outside of your home as the pandemic is going on See you next Sunday at the same time, same week. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye.